Shirt. Robert Pinsky. In this poem, Shirt, Pinsky infuses a seemingly ordinary object, a simple shirt, with historical significance, conferring upon it an almost mythological status. The poet focuses on the different locations and processes during garment manufacturing. Using a particular example of the infamous Triangle Fire in 1911, Pinsky presents the struggles and hardships of the factory workers. As the poem constantly alternates between the description of the shirt and the worker's working conditions, he highlights the inseparable link between the two, suggesting society's materialistic priorities over human labor. To start with, Pinsky uses groups of isolated nouns as lists to reflect the repetitive nature of factory work throughout the poem. In fact, the poem opens with the line, the back, the yoke, the yardage, this repetitive rhythm mimics the monotonous sound of the factory. At the same time, the nouns describe the specialized but obscured names that highlight the specialist nature of garment making. This creates a separation between the general public and the skilled factory workers as if the workers are speaking a different language. Thus, it highlights the segregation of the sweatshop workers and the lack of attention from society to think about the origins of their clothes. By referring to the sweatshop workers as Koreans or Malaysians, the poet generalizes them with the conjunction, or. It also opposes the East, Asian countries to the West developed world. This shows the ignorance of the first world countries and puts their priorities and labor on the third world countries. The fact that the lapped seams and invisible stitches are put in place by Korean or Malaysian sweatshop workers suggests these are the things that no one ever notices. While the poet is using this poem to draw attention to them and to the larger problems of the conditions these workers are made to work in. In the following stanza, Pinsky displays the workers with human like behavior as opposed to the machine like working they have to face every day. With the act of gossiping over tea and noodles, and talking money or politics, the poet imbues the workers with personality, cares, and desires. He presents them as real people as opposed to faceless, automaton statistics. Tellingly, their interests are framed as taking part, while one fitted this arm piece, despite them nominally being, on their break, suggesting that the work is incessant and they don't really have time to chat or relax at all in their day. The fact they are discussing, money and politics is not expanded upon, but would suggest that they have concerns in both fields as they are not being paid enough and not being protected by their governments from their harsh working conditions. Moreover, Pinsky uses the reference to the 1911 Triangle Factory Fire to present the tragic instances for the workers. When describing the number of people who died, the speaker states, 146 died in the flames. The lack of nouns from the uses of ellipsis emphasizes the fact that the workers are just considered to be a number. It suggests that the workers had no individuality in the eye of the factory or the authority. Thus, it makes the scene particularly sympathetic as the workers were put in a place of vulnerability and were taken advantage of. Even till their death, they remained anonymous. The poet then moves on to a specific moment of the fire incident with the line, a young man helped a girl to step, and let her drop. The adjective, young, conveys the innocence of the victims. Their youth implies that they would have got an exciting future ahead of them, but the reality of the scene is that they are facing death, which makes it extremely tragic and empathetic. The juxtaposition of the verbs, helping, and, drop, highlight the helplessness of their decision in this tragic situation. As the readers of this poem, we're forced to take the perspective of the unsympathetic, witness, who is distant from afar. It highlights the cold and uncaring public and creates a sense of hopelessness and despair. The language of garment making is continued with the line, prints, plaids, checks, houndstooth, tattersall, madras. These different nouns all describe the same item-specific varieties of checked pattern, although with nuances within. The poet purposefully chooses to highlight this as to show the level of detail and formality in the language of garment making, yet in everyday speech, it is never mentioned. Similarly, like the ignorance of human labor, at least in the Western world. In addition, in the fourth to last stanza, Pinsky returns to utilize the list-like structure with the line, the planter, 
the picker, the sorter. The poet displays a sense of ambiguity with the facts as he could be referring to the machine or the particular job of a worker. This reflects the dehumanization of the factory workers as the names describe both the equipment and the employee. At the same time, it highlights the replacement of the worker by machine in the modern age. The following line, sweating at her machine in a litter of cotton, confirms that the sorter referees to a worker, which suggests how the factory workers have to work like machines in order to make her a living. The line, sweating at her machine in a litter of cotton, highlights the poor working condition as the word, litter, reveals how unsanitary the sweatshop is. Pinsky then uses a simile to compare the worker as slaves with the line, as slaves in calico head rags sweat red in fields. The word, calico, describes an African painted cotton painter. The mention of, slaves, links to the historical reference which is a traumatic experience and connotes the inhuman brutality of the slave trade. Pinsky brings the knowledge to the forefront of the reader's mind and connects modern factory with slavery influence which implies that nothing has changed. The poet suggests the lack of humanity in the garment-making process. The shirt that the speaker is mentioning in this poem may or may not come from slavery, but the chance that it could challenges the reader how they view the clothing manufacturing process. Throughout the poem, Pink C uses continuous verbs such as talking and sweating to describe the workers manufacturing a shirt and uses past tense verbs for the shirt that the speaker is buying, such as inspected, culled. This suggests that while the particular shirt that the speaker has has finished its manufacturing, the process still remains and the sweatshop or factory incidents can be happening again in any part of the world. Through this, the poet urges the reader to take actions and consider the consequences in the fashion industry. There are many cases of enjambment throughout the poem, and it always connects the last line of each stanza to the following stanza. This creates a consistent poetic voice while creating an irregular structure. The poem also has an irregular rhyme scheme and syllabic structure. The irregularity represents the worker's need and yearning for freedom but imprisoned by the repetitive work they have to face every day, which is symbolized by the repeated three-line stanza. In conclusion, Pink C conveys the pain and torment a typical factory worker has to go through which creates the feeling of empathy and helplessness for the reader. As he contemplates his recent purchase, which, in all probability, had been made in an overseas sweatshop, he begins to reflect not only on the relationship between the consumer and manufacturer but also on how one can choose to ignore inhumane working conditions. Pinsky's musings take him on a selective world tour of the clothing industry the 1911 Triangle Factory Fire, in which nearly 150 workers were killed. Workers in Scottish mills creating clan tartans for kilts. American slaves picking cotton in fields. And finally to Irma, a possible descendant of slaves, who inspects shirts from their shape and fit to their simulated bone buttons. Through the purchase of a simple shirt, one becomes connected to others culturally, politically, and historically.